Well, we have some geometry problems this month, so you know what that means. I got my man Harvey to help us out. Yeah, good to see you. Now, if you've been watching these Math Counts minis for the past few years, you've seen Harvey. You know what he can do. You know why I brought him out here. Now, Harvey, what do you see here? How are we going to tackle this? I'll just move on to the next problem because this one's nothing. Well, that doesn't help a whole lot, Harvey. We've got to solve this problem. You already solved it. You said it's nothing. Okay. All right, well, we'll solve the problem, and then we'll move on. All right, here we go. All right, we got a rectangle. T, U, V, W, W, X is 4, X, Y is 2, Y, V is 1. We got U, V is 6, and this is definitely not the scale. We want the absolute difference between the areas of triangle T, X, Z. That's this little triangle right here. And U, Y, Z, which is this triangle over here. All right, so I just... Find the areas of these two triangles and then subtract and then we'll be finished. All right, here we go. Well, that's six. That means this is six. I don't have any side lengths right away, but I can find, well, I can find this one using the Pythagorean theorem. I can find UY using the Pythagorean theorem, but then I have to find some altitudes and I don't know how to do this. Yeah, I know you said it's nothing, but come on, I got this. No, not really. Maybe I don't. Um, they're part of something bigger. Oh, you're right. They are. Each of these little triangles, I, I don't quite know how to handle the little triangle, but each little triangle is part of something bigger. This TXZ, this little triangle, is part of this larger triangle, TXU. So I could find the area of TXZ by first finding the area of the larger triangle, TXU, and we know how to handle that, and then subtracting off this other little one. So this larger triangle here, well, I have the base is just this side length of the rectangle, that's 7. And then the height of it is, is 6, this other side of the rectangle. So the area of this triangle is 7 times 6 divided by 2. The area of this big triangle, TXU, is just half the rectangle. So now all I have to do is subtract out this piece right here, and then I'll get that. So now all I have to do is find the area of this. Don't bother. What are you talking about? Be strategically lazy. That's a great idea. Oh, I love this strategy. We're going to be strategically lazy. Check this out. We could go ahead and find the area of this little triangle. And yeah, you try to figure it out on your own, all right? You can do it, because this triangle is similar to that triangle. And I'll, I'll leave, it, leave it there, and you figure out the rest of that. But I'm going to be strategically lazy, because who doesn't like being strategically lazy? Check out what's going on with the other little triangle. The other little triangle, we get that by taking this big triangle, TYU, which is also half the rectangle, just like TXU is. TYU, we subtract TZU right here, the same little piece. So for each of these little triangles, we can find the area of the little triangle by taking a bigger triangle that's half the rectangle, then cutting out this same piece, TZU. So we start with half the rectangle in each case, and we cut out the same piece in each case. So the remaining little triangles have to have the same area, which means the absolute difference, the answer to the problem, is indeed Nothing. Zero. All right, nice work, Carp. We'll go on to the next problem. We have another rectangle, A, B, C, D. If A, B is given as 6, A, D is 5. We're extending A, C out to point E, such that A, C is congruent to C, E. We're going to mark that in our diagram. We always like to add that sort of information in here. We want to find the length of D, E. Oh, yeah, of course. Pythagorean theorem. That's what he always says, right? You see, find the length. First thing he always says, Pythagorean theorem. But come on, Harv, there's no right triangle with DE as a side length. There's no right triangle there. Yet. Oh, hey, yet. Uh, I got you. I got you. No, I've seen you do this before. I got it from here. I got it from here. There's no right triangle with DE as a side length. Yet. And this is where this is where Harvey really shines, because he sees it, he sees things. I just he sees things like this. There's no right triangle yet. So we add the right triangle. And we, we're going to be strategic about how we add a right triangle with side length DE. We're going to choose this one because there's a right angle right up here. And when you have multiple right angles in a problem, you get parallel lines. These two are parallel. You get similar triangles. ADC is similar to this larger triangle right here. And then we can put these together to find some more side lengths. So we got this small triangle is similar to the larger triangle because AC is half of AE. We know that the Small triangle lengths are half the larger triangle lengths. So this length right here, this DC is 6. So this length down here is going to be double that. It's going to be 12. 
And just like AC and CE are equal, AD and this length down here are equal. This is 5. So now I have my right triangle. I have the legs. DE is the hypotenuse. I can break out the Pythagorean theorem. 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. 25 plus 144 is 169. Take the square root. Right there, you know that. You see that 5, 12, 13 Pythagorean triple. We're on to the next problem. Another rectangle. All right, we got some right angles again. I have diagonal XZ is divided into three equal segments of length 2. And then we add these segments here that are each perpendicular to the diagonal. I'll go ahead and draw in those right angles and we see those right angles, we know immediately what we're thinking about. We're thinking about the Pythagorean theorem. We're thinking about similar triangles. So, uh, I don't know how to use them, though. Now, I see this, this little triangle is similar to this larger triangle. It's just like the last problem. You know, the lengths of this are double the lengths of that, but I don't know how to use that information yet. There, there's not enough in the diagram. Oh, that's, that's a good call. We're going to throw in a variable here. We're going to throw in a variable. We're going to label one of these lengths with a variable and then try to find other lengths we can label. So I'm going to put this C right here. And we just saw that this, this little triangle, its side lengths are half the corresponding lengths of the larger triangle. So that means this, this length right here is, is double C. That's 2C. And these two side lengths, these are going to be equal. What else can we find in this diagram? Uh, we see that uh, these two are equal, these two are going to be equal. It's the same situation going on down here. In fact, this triangle over here is congruent to this triangle. Let's just you know, take this and rotate it around 180 degrees. You can say this, this thing down here is C as well. And, uh, oh, you know what? There's still some more similar triangles in here. There are a lot of right angles in this problem. So, like rectangles, a lot of right angles. There's a right angle down here. These, these two are right angles. These two little triangles down here. They're similar to each other. This angle is 90 minus that one. This angle is also 90 minus that one. So these two angles are equal. And this angle equals this angle. These two little right triangles are similar. So now I can write an equation. It's really why we like throwing these variables in. Eventually, we hope to be able to build an equation. We can take the ratio of the long leg to the short leg in this triangle. It has to equal the ratio of the long leg to the short leg in the smaller triangle. Now we can solve for c. The twos cancel, and we're in, we end up with c squared equals 2 after we multiply both sides by c there. So c has to be the square root of 2. And now we are off and running. This is the square root of 2 up here. This is 2 times the square root of 2. Now we break out our Pythagorean theorem. We've got 2 squared is 4. Square root of 2 squared, that's 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. Take the square root. Right, this is going to be square root of 6 is here, square root of 6 is here, and what? The long way, you're already finished? Uh, what, what do we do? Okay, we find the area of the little triangle. The area of the little triangle there is 2 times the square root of 2 divided by 2. We get the square root of 2 is the area of the little triangle. And then we multiply by 12. Multiply by 12? What is he talking about? Why do we... Uh, forget it, uh, forget it, Harvey. Look, I'm going to finish. I've already got one side of the rectangle. Right? we got one side, right? We can find the other side real quick because we've got the Pythagorean theorem all set up. I'm going to finish it my way. Here we go. We've got right triangle right over here. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. We square 2 times the square root of 2. We get 4 times 2 is 8. We square the 2. We get 4. 8 plus 4 is 12. So the hypotenuse over here is the square root of 12, which just simplifies 2 times the square root of 3. And now the area of W, X, Y, Z. This side is 2 times the square root of 6. And we multiply it by this, which is 2 times the square root of 3. 2 times 2 is 4. 6 times 3 is 18. The square root of 18, well, 18 is 9 times 2, so that's 3 times the square root of 2. 3 times 4 is 12 times the area of the little triangle. How did he figure that out? 